I almost want to say, welcome back to Country Radio. We've missed you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll take that. <laughs> the your new, So you're working on a whole bunch of new material. I am. How are you approaching the new material in terms of what you want to say? You know, um, there's a new approach all the way around in, in the music I'm making right now, from the way it's recorded uh, to what I'm saying. I, I want... Um, I'm kind of coming with a new sound for me. Somewhere tonight is definitely, um, it sounds different than Just Got Started Loving You, but country radio in 2015 sounds a lot different uh, mm-hmm. than it did in 2008. And yep. uh, um, I've been writing so much that uh, I've actually built a studio in my house, recording much of the stuff myself, and then hiring musicians to come in and play after I built my tracks. Um, and it's a lot more hands on than it's ever been, which is something that I really enjoy doing. Um, and uh, I think that you're going to hear that in the new music. There's a, a new energy and a new focus and uh, a lot of drive and fun. Yep. What is it that you think one can achieve with a song that doesn't really seem to be possible with any other form of language? Um, you could touch people with a song uh, that has specific meaning to you and it can mean something completely different to someone else. And that's what I love. Like, uh, you know, being a part of writing in color, it was... I get people come up to me all the time and say that it reminds them of their family and their family's details. And even though, you know, I see my own in there and Jamie sees theirs, um, that it's it's wonderful that a song can translate like that. You know what I mean? That it can can speak to somebody on that kind of level. You break, make them break down and cry when they hear it and bring up memories that, uh, you know, that otherwise wouldn't be there. Yeah. You've always been really good throughout. I, I mainly talk with songwriters, so it's yeah. kind of my, my normal cool. thing to go there. Um, you've always <coughs> been really good at balancing, yes, you can write in color and you can write somewhere tonight. Sure. You have both in equal measure is that something you purposely cultivated or is that just who you are I think I write a lot of material um I probably write 250 songs a year um and that's a lot (laughs) yeah it's a lot like all the time five days a week you know so it's all the time and uh, uh it's in those days you get a lot of different kind of energy and a different kind of mood and a lot of times I write with you know different people every week so it's what what's in the room that day oftentimes is what gets written uh, in fact I think that that's on that's honestly the secret to success of of writing every day is to write what's there in the room with you and so not everything that I write is for me um, and so part of my job as an artist is to determine which of those songs that I've written that year are for me? What needs to go on my record? What's the direction and the sound? And um, you know, there's a lot of things that go that go in between that end up with other artists and other things. And, and uh, sometimes that stuff can be a real blessing. Yep. Ed, you mentioned the word success. I'll be spending a lot of the year talking to people about happiness and success for sure. a documentary. Sure. Yeah. Um, what is your definition of success? Success to me is um, making a living doing what I love, and that's playing my guitar, singing songs, writing songs, um, and it, that's at whatever level. You know, I, I don't need to be rich. I don't need to be famous. I just need to be able to make a living doing what I love and what I feel like God put me here to do. If I'm doing those things and I'm being able to provide for my family, that's success for me. Yep. And you had one of the things that when they said, hey, do you want to talk to James? Like, yes, because one, great songs, but Thank two, you. you have seen the, you know, the record deal not really sure. work out well and then go to the Grammy award. Yeah. What do those phases of your life mean to you? You know, um, I think they're all important. I think that uh, going through as many different, I've been through a couple different record deals, I've been through, you know, highs and lows of all this business has to offer, and I think what it what it's done for me is make me a lot more level-headed person, artist, writer, um, and, uh, you know, it's good to be humbled, it's good to be, uh, find that place where, you know, you can, you can uh, succeed emotionally and, and spiritually at whatever level that you're at, you know what I mean? You, you, you don't give in to, to the lows and you don't let the highs get too high. And I think that that's really important in, in maintaining. And that's something that's part of your personality? Or I think so. Or is that so. a lesson you feel you I think I think it's, well, uh, it's definitely some <laughs> of the lessons. It's become part of my personality, yes, yes. I think, you know, um, God kind of does those things to you to... to to make sure that you're prepared for what what life brings. And, and uh, at this point in my life, I, I don't think I've ever been more prepared than I am now. The idea of happiness, because I think it's when people tie 
happiness to success. Mm -hmm. That's when they run into trouble. Absolutely. Have you caught yourself doing that at some point? Because it's hard. You want yeah, sure. I have in the past. For your music. No you know. question, I have in the past, and and I think that that's definitely a mistake, and that's a, a lesson to be learned. Is that you know uh, again, my definition of success is different than it used to be in the past too, and and uh, um, that being able to roll with the punches and go, you know what this is the circumstances I find myself in and what you choose to do with those cir circumstances determines what you're going to do in the future and so um, I found that uh, I'm very capable of being knocked down and getting back up again and and uh, and being okay with that you know and, and I think that that's that that is a strength um, that I don't know that I had before yeah, that resilience that yeah, you know, even absolutely. if it goes wrong, I know I can deal with exactly. it. Exactly. I can pick it up and, and, and run with the ball again if I need to. How much of that do you find seeping into My, your approach to the noob stuff? Where you go, sure. Obviously, you want it to be relevant for 2015, sure. but you still want to make sure you say what you want to say. Yeah. The I don't, balancing act. Yeah, I don't let um, what's going on in the radio determine what I'm going to write about um it, material wise I'll, I'll say what I want to say regardless and okay. you know those the songs that get to country radio um, may not be my deepest songs they may not be the songs that um, uh, you know that I felt like I needed to say something about myself spiritually or wherever I wrote that song from that day um, but uh, it's the nature of, of you know our business is that you know there's songs for you there's songs for people on records and that's what making an album used to be for is that you used to be able to go okay yeah. these are our these are our singles these are our song our reflective songs and you had a whole range of things and it's a little harder to sell a record these days than it was you know uh, years back too so making a record is is a, you got to look at the process differently and um so there will always be songs that i love for me um just because i love them and then there will be songs that i i put out because i think other people love them you know yeah and the touring that you do, I mean, I, I always wanted to, when I talk to people and I prepare for interviews, I, I had like the live videos on YouTube. And sort of sure. Reminded me of, and I watched you once play, um, just hop on stage with Chris Jansen. I sure, think, yeah. And just, you know, it's just this little bar here in town yep. for just fun. You yep. just have fun. And the person you are on stage, is has that changed at all with I, learning all these lessons? or does that, I think is that I'm just more confident than I've ever been on stage. I can, you know... Um, one of the cool things that I've done in the last couple of years is do a whole bunch of just me and a guitar acoustic shows all across the country. And I'm talking about playing for as many as, you know, 1,500 people in a night with just a guitar. And so you have to be extremely confident that you can deliver what you're going to deliver. Um, it's like being a stand-up comedian. You know what I mean? And you have to be able to accept whatever the audience is going to bring to you and then be able to take them to a place by yourself that, um, you know, that you may not be able to, that either you're going to rise to the occasion or you're going to fail. And I think that doing that has really, I don't know, it's made me way more confident in what I do and, and way more at ease in front of an audience. And I think that, that was, that's an important growth step for me. That's, yeah, because there's nowhere to hide. No, there's no there's band no band. There's none of that stuff. It's just you and a guitar, and you got to go out there and make it happen. It's your personality. It's your voice. It's the stories you tell or don't tell, and you know. And it's about you know really finding out what it takes to in entertain an audience all by yourself. And and uh, it's something that I've really enjoyed doing. I bet it must yeah. be fun. It, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, because a lot of you know a lot of you guys you start that way. Well, in Nashville, also you know I. I came up sitting on a stool in a songwriter's uh, round you know that was the way we did it you sat up there and you there was four people on stage and you sing a song and and you tell your story and um it's like taking that everywhere uh, around the country and then it's only you and not three other writers so you really got to carry the whole thing but i love doing it and uh um it, it was a, i think a really smart move on my behalf because it's been very successful for us yeah yeah and i've been finishing with this question which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Oh, man. Um, certainly, uh, as far as songs I wrote or just songs in general. Songs in general, songs you wrote. Oh, man, that's a really good question. I wish I had time to think about that. Right, life, so. yes. Uh, certainly in color and just got started loving you have to be on there because they were such huge parts of, of my life. And um, uh, No Hurry is another one that you know, wrote with Zach Brown. Uh, that's definitely one of those songs. Um, but there's lots of other songs. Uh, I got this song that I wrote called Misspent Youth years ago that uh, if you search around the internet you can find that it's a song I love always loved um, also there's a song I wrote called Long 
Roots that a guy named David White put out, uh, and he's an indie artist. But it's a song that I love, and it's something that means a lot to me. And as a songwriter, it's it's a uh, it's that kind of song. It's the kind of song you play at the Bluebird, not necessarily play it yeah. on country radio. You know what I mean? So, um, but there's lots of great songs. Um, and if I had more time to think about that question, I'd probably have a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is pretty good. good. Thank you so much.